The word plastic originally meant pliable and easily shaped. With time it became a name for category of materials called synthetic polymers. Polymer means of many parts and polymers are made of long chains of molecules. Nature is full of polymers and the most common natural polymer is cellulose. The material that makes up the cell walls of plants. The problem started when humans learnt how to make synthetic polymers over the last century and a half. The plentiful carbon atoms provided by petroleum and other fossil fuels were used to make long chains of atoms arranged in repeating units often much longer than those found in nature. It was the length of these chains and the patterns in which they were arrayed that made polymers strong, lightweight and flexible. In other words, it's what made them so plastic. At that time, humans were happy to discover new types of plastic. There were two main broad categories based on their response to heat. The thermoset or thermosetting plastics that once cooled and hardened retained their shapes and did not return to their original form. Their hardness and durability made them ideal for use in auto parts, aircraft parts and tires. In contrast, thermoplastics are less rigid and can soften upon heating and return to their original form. They are easily molded and extruded into films, fibers and packaging. Then there are the varieties of plastic in terms of size that has direct bearing on their role in plastic pollution. Macroplastic is the clearly visible plastic that can be caught and it usually does not have a direct impact on the food chain. The much smaller particles of different origins, sizes and chemical composition are the microplastics. They are 1 to 5 mm in size and float in our oceans like a soup. These pose a clear danger because they can find their way directly or spontaneously into the food chain due to their size. But the most challenging form is the nanoplastic. They are typically smaller than the few micrometers and are formed as larger plastics break down over time into smaller fragments. However, despite their small size, they have an enormous surface area and can bind an even bigger amount of toxic compounds than microplastic. Their small size makes it possible for them to spontaneously overcome natural biological barriers such as cell membranes by a process called endocytosis. One of the most documented issues has been their presence in the gastrointestinal tract GIT of various fish and marine animals. 